Hey everyone, welcome to the HIT360 class for today. We have a special guest uh, coach for today, which will be my gorgeous partner in life and business, Brent. I hope you enjoy the session today. I'll be taking, I'll be doing the demo and doing it with you guys while he coaches you. I'm really looking forward to it. Hope you guys enjoy it. Let's do it. So Soph, could you please show us a four plane lunge to kick off? So please follow along guys and uh, We'll get to it. Alrighty, so with our lunge, we're going to try and drop both elbows towards the floor between our feet. And then we keep our opposite hand down. So if our left foot's forward, we'll keep our right hand down and reach to the sky with our left hand. Then we sit up tall. We're pushing our hips forward and reaching to the sky. And then we rotate across the front leg once again. And then we'll stand all the way out of it. So we'll do our lunge and we swap feet. So our right foot's forward, which means we put our hands to the ground inside. If we can reach with our elbows, we will. Left hand stays down, we reach up to our right, and then sitting up tall, coming into hip and trunk extension again, and we reach across the front foot. Nice one. We're just going to do one more on either side. So left foot is forward, we're dropping the hands, or if we can, we'll take the elbows to the floor. The right hand stays down, left hand reaches to the sky, we come into some trunk rotation, and then coming back to neutral, we sit up tall, push the hips forward, reaching the shoulders back, and then reaching across the front foot. And just one more on the other side. So opposite hand to foot, so our right foot's forward. We'll keep our left hand down and reach to the sky. And then sitting up tall, hips forward, shoulders back. And rotating across the front leg. Nice one. Then we're going to move into a squat to forward fold. So uh, could you start square on for us please, Soph? And we're going to be just about hip width apart. We'll start in our squat, please. So we're thinking about trying to be upright in this position. We've got nice straight arms, thinking chest up and eyes forward. And we're going to hold onto our ankles or our toes here. And we keep holding onto them as we straighten our leg as much as we can. Awesome. All right, and then sitting back in our squat. Could you just turn side on, please? So from our forward fold, we're always holding onto that anchor point. So it's gonna be uh, Soph's ankle you can see here. A good alternative would be to just grab the front of your toes. Can you show us that please, Soph? Nice one. That might feel a little more manageable for you. And our goal is to have straight arms when we're sitting down in our squat, trying to use our straightened arm to lift our shoulder and extend through our back. And then we bend our elbow as much as we can to pull ourselves lower when we move into the forward fold. Nice one. We'll do one more, Soph. And as you come back to your squat, Lovely, can we stand up out of your squat please? And we'll go to our four plane lunge again. So guys, we're just going to do one more round of what we've done so far. We've got our two four plane lunges on either side, moving through a nice big range, getting things moving and easing our way into things. We come into extension, reaching up and back and turning across the front leg. We stand all the way up, right foot goes forward, hands or elbows reaching toward the floor. Left hand stays down as we reach to the sky and sitting up tall, pushing our hips forward, reaching our shoulders back, and then rotating across the front leg. Can we get one more on either side, please, Safe. So we stand all the way up, left foot goes forward, we drop the elbows down. Totally understand if you can't get your elbows down, guys. I'm uh, certainly not as mobile as Safe. We sit up tall, we reach across the front leg. Nice one, and we stand all the way up. We've got one to go, right foot goes forward. Left hand will stay down as we reach to the sky. There's a phrase in training that our needs uh, differ by, uh, by degree as opposed to by kind. And we think that that's a really good summary of, of how we train the fact that Soph's obviously very mobile, but we can both be doing this workout. We can all be doing this workout and, uh, and doing very similar sorts of exercises but working to different intensities or to different ranges. Maybe if we were lifting, it would mean that we're moving different loads, uh, but ultimately we all get a relevant stimulus or a stimulus that's relative to where our fitness is at. Nice one. So if we wanted to make this a little tougher, we could even grab the back of our legs and force our shoulder lower. Nice one. If you're finding the squat difficult, I'd encourage you to hold a little higher up your leg or the toe if that's not helping. Nice one. Trying to sit up really tall when we're in the squat, bring the shoulders really low when we're in the forward fold. Can we go three more, please, So We'll just spend a little more time in each one now. So really tall there. Let's hold that squat for three, two, and one. Lovely. And then we'll do the same in our forward fold. Bit of a pause there. And back to our squat, two to go. Nice one. Love your work, well done. 
And let's push the knees out with your elbows while we're there. A little extra rotation, nice and tall. And then into our forward fold for the last time. Okay, so guys, that is our very gentle warm up. We're going to segue from there to our workout by going through some of the exercises and getting familiar with them. We've got 26 different exercises. So we'll skip a couple, but we'll touch on all of the major patterns that we'll be looking at going forward. All righty. So to kick things off, we're going to do a little slower version for some of them, and we'll pick up our intensity when we get into the workout proper. So for our first high knees, so can you just go to a hug and reach? Lovely, so we're trying to think about being really stable on the foot that's planted. We wanna shift our weight to the outside of our foot, but we wanna keep our big toe down as we do that. And then if you turn to face me as you keep going, please, so we're just hugging our knee and thinking about pushing our hips forward. So we're trying to lift our knee as high as we can to our chest and driving our hip forward. Lovely, let's move on. Uh, with the plank from knees to elbows, we're going to just go nice and slowly here. Um, we'll lift one foot at a time and bring it all the way into our elbow. Very good. As you can see, when Soph comes back to the near side, uh, Soph's doing a good job of lifting her, her leg to the outside, so she's got a little bit of an abduction going on there as well. If you're finding that difficult, you could step your foot in underneath your body, so we only go a partial range. Lovely, and that's gonna make it a little easier to balance. So it's like a slow motion mountain climber, you might say. Alrighty, from there we've got a jumping jack. And we're just going to start with a really small jump on these. So uh, let's see it, star jump maybe you're familiar with. Lovely. And so when we get into the workout, if you wanna make this a little tougher, we'll just rebound and go a touch quicker. Uh, can we see a curtsy to a lateral lunge please on the left side? So for the curtsy, we're looking to move through a big hip range here. We don't wanna see our knee uh, trying to bend laterally. It's a hinge, we don't really want to see that sort of movement. Uh, so as we drop our back knee to the ground, we're trying to keep our torso nice and upright. And then on the outside, we've got both feet planted. So on this one, you can see Soph's trailing leg, the heels off the ground, front foot is planted, and then both feet are on the ground and we're sinking into the opposite side. Lovely. Alrighty. The next one would be just the opposite side. So not much change there. Um, the twist jump, Soph, can we see that please? So. It's a relatively small range. We could go a little faster and a bigger range if we're wanting to uh, make that a little tougher. So we're trying to jump higher and turn a little further. Can we see a quad extension, please? Nice one. So in this position, Soph's going to be hinging at her knee. So she's squeezing her glutes to keep her hips extended and she's squeezing her abs to keep her ribs tucked down. So we're not just trying to lean back from our hips. We want the movement to come from our knees. This is a tough one. This is probably my favorite body weight exercise. No equipment required and uh, applicable to all fitness levels. Alrighty, from there, can we see a push up to a side plank, please, Soph? Now, Soph's gonna do the first round on her knees here. Very good. Soph's doing a good job. If you actually just, uh, sorry, can we stay on the push up for a moment? If you just turn your head towards the camera, please. Um, so feet down that way. And you'll see that Soph's keeping her elbows really narrow, tucked to her body. Very good, as opposed to flaring out to the side. Nice one, which is just allowing her a little more control as she gets into the bottom of the movement. Alrighty, and then she goes to a side plank. So she keeps one knee on the ground, one hand on the ground and reaches up to the side. So we've got our push up and then we roll to the side. Perfect, and we'll be alternating sides when we come to it. From there, we've got some 180 degree squats. So we've already done a squat in our warm up. Nice one, just building on the 180 jumps that we did a moment ago, or the twist jump that we did a moment ago. Very good, alrighty. Can we go to a commando please? So another pressing pattern for the upper body. We're going to walk from our palms to our elbows. And if we wanted to make this a little tougher, or maybe for when you come to the workout, we just lift our knees off the ground and we have to support a little more of our weight. It's a longer lever, it's more work. Very good. So in that one, we're thinking about trying not to twist and rotate through our hips and shoulders. So did a really good job of staying very square. Uh, from there, we'll go to our plank bunny hops, please. So we'll just do a walking version if you could initially. So we bring both feet out to one side of our hands, step them back out to our plank position, then to the opposite side, back to the start, and then into the center. Are we going alternating, are we? Yeah. Okay, we're alternating, sorry guys. Can you just turn uh, feet away from the camera and show us that, please? 
So alternating sides, we want to come back to our plank and demonstrate some stability there every time. It's a long time under tension. Nice one. Last one, Soph, is going to be a toe reach, please. Alrighty, so legs are as extended as we can uh, manage in that position there. Totally understand if your knees are bent, mine certainly would be. And then we're reaching up. It's a very small range. We're trying to lift our shoulders as high as we can. We want to think about trying to relax our neck in this position. So we tuck our chin to our chest and articulate through the trunk. Lovely, so alrighty, good job. Guys, we're gonna have a 30 second break. If you wanna grab yourself a quick drink, please go for it. Um, but in just a moment, we'll be kicking off with our workout. So we're going to work through one round of all of these exercises. I'll explain them in the rest period. So we'll be working for 40 seconds and I would like to see you try and remain as active as possible throughout that time. We don't wanna go particularly fast. I would encourage you to work at something that feels like about a seven out of 10 sort of difficulty and Let's try and make that measurement about three minutes in. So after three exercises, see how you're feeling. If it's too tough, slow it down. You've got a lot of work ahead of you still. If the pace is going okay, that's cool. Keep at it. Alrighty, so so. Would you just kick off that timer for me, please? So we're going to kick off in 10 seconds time, guys. And we're back to the start with our high knees. This time it's going to be rather than hugging our knee and lifting it, we'll be going into a running on the spot with a nice high knee. Alrighty, let's go. So we've got 40 seconds here. Very good, Soph. Would you turn side on for me, please? Nice one. Soph's doing a good job keeping her elbows bent. She's up on the ball of her foot. If you wanted to slow this down a little bit, you could go to just a standing march. And we're just looking for a significant range of motion, looking to lift our knee towards our chest. That's halfway. We've got another 20 seconds on this one. Let's remember, we only want it to be about a seven out of 10 sort of intensity. So ease up if you need to. We're all going to be working at different paces, understandably. We've just got five seconds left, keep going. And that's time. All right, clock's counting down. This time we're back to our plank with the knee lifting to our elbow. So we wanna keep our elbows locked out here, nice straight arms, and it's up to you the sort of pace you wanna be working at. So we can lift the knee to the outside, which is going to be a little larger range. It's a little more challenging. We could walk our feet up the middle. Can you show us that one again, please, Soph? Very good. Just a little smaller range of motion there, a little more controlled, but we are looking for time under tension. So we don't want to go super quickly here. We want to try and spend as much time as possible with our foot off the ground. So we're supported on our three points, one foot and both of our hands. Nicely done. We've just got 10 seconds left there, guys. Very good. All right, we'll be coming back to our feet and in 10 seconds time, we'll get into our jumping jacks. So remembering we can look to jump a little higher if we're wanting to make these harder, we can go a little faster. And if you're finding that challenging, a good scale would be a smaller range of motion. So we could even step our feet out. We could go from standing, reaching to alternate sides. We can add in our hands for a little more range of motion or our full version. We've got our star jump, our jumping jack there. We've got 20 seconds left. I hope you're going all right, guys. I'm feeling pretty good. I can't speak for Soph. Soph's pretty fit. She's probably going all right. But here we have seven seconds left. And I just want to remind you, it's only meant to be about a seven out of 10. So if you need to slow things down, now's the time to do it. Don't wait until it's already too hard and then maybe unable to finish the workout. We're going to go to our curtsy here. So we'll stay on our feet. We're ste stepping out wide, we're dropping our knee down behind the trailing foot, and then we take a big step out into a lateral lunge. Very nice. So we'll stay on the one side for the whole round here, guys, for the whole 40 seconds. We're nearly halfway on this one already. So can I see you with your palms to the sky out in front? Nice one. That's just the way to keep us a little more upright through our torso, guys. We can lift our eyes to the horizon. So we say chest up and eyes forward, and that's going to help us to be a little taller too. Let's just play into the muscles that we want to challenge here. Okay, last couple now. Time for one more. Very good. Alrighty, we're going to stay on our feet and keep with the leg theme here, guys. We've got some jump twists. Fantastic. Alrighty, clock's on, let's go, 40 seconds. Remembering if you wanted to make these a little harder, you could jump a little higher. 
try and get some Jordan hang time. If you're finding that tough, if you don't want to be jumping, we could go to a standing rotating version. So we just take one step in, one step out, and we dip our knees. Nicely done. Alrighty, our full version once again with 15 seconds left to go. Soph's not just showing us her good rhythm with the arms, it really helps you to rotate to have that counter movement. Five seconds left. And we'll be back to our curtsy on the opposite side. Nice one. 10 seconds rest, guys. So it's curtsy on the opposite side. So we'll be standing on our left foot this time, taking our right knee to the ground behind our heel. Let's do it. Nice one. Once again, nice and tall, as upright as we can be through the torso in both of those positions. Thinking chest up and eyes forward. There's a very hardcore old weightlifting coach who says that you need to look forward because weightlifting is war and the enemy is coming and we must always be ready. But that's a, that's a little intense for me, so I'll just say it helps you to remain uh, nice and upright. <laughs> 10 seconds left. Something to think about over the last 10 seconds. <laughs> that's a job well done. Okay, that's time there guys. We're gonna round out this little leg theme here with our quad extension. This is one we practiced in our warm up. So we're thinking about squeezing our glutes, keeping our hips forward, and then squeezing our abs to keep our ribs down, maintaining a consistent distance, ribs to hips. So we're measuring here on so is that distance consistent or is she extending and maybe creating a little unnecessary pressure through her lower back or is she flexing and straining either through the anterior, once again, that lower back. Regardless, we want to try and keep the hip uh, fairly extended. We're trying to maintain a consistent rib to hip distance. Injury considerations aside, it's going to make things a little harder on the quads, which is absolutely what we're here for. If that's a bit uncomfortable for you, you could dig your toes into the ground, and that might restrict your range, making it a little easier as well. All right, here we're going to stay down here on the floor, guys, and that's time. Good stuff. We'll go to our push-up with the side plank, where we roll to our side. So, Soph, could you roll to uh, face the screen for us on this first round so we can see how you're going? Nice one. So, we do our push up. One foot stays on the ground, one hand stays on the ground. Nice one. We'll keep alternating here, guys. If we wanted to make it a little harder, we could lift our knees off the ground for either the push up or the plank or both. Nice one, Soph. Can you go head to the screen for us for a moment? Show us how much rotation you're getting. Very good. We've got five seconds to go, guys. Alrighty, nicely done. And we do want you to work hard, so we're gonna ask you to stand all the way back up again. We'll go to our 180 squat, so we'd like to see you do a, a squat to a range that's manageable, and then springing up. If that's a little tough for you, a slower, more controlled version would be just to squat. We won't worry about the rotation. It takes away the impact of landing, takes away the plyometric element for the takeoff and the landing, I should say. And here's our full version again. You could even shorten that range, guys. You might only be turning 90 degrees. Fantastic. We've got 15 seconds left there. Yeah, there's a bit of work in those. Last five seconds, guys. After this one, we'll be dropping back down onto the floor into our plank position for a plank walk. And this is one that as much as we're pushing with our arms, our shoulders, our pecs and so forth, we really want to think of this as a core exercise. So an anti-rotation exercise, trying to be as stable as possible. Soph's doing a really good job. I might have to grab my tee and see if I can rest it on her back there. I think she's doing a really good job. Actually, my tee would be safe. Good job. Can we jump up on the toes, Soph? Show everyone if they're wanting to make it a little harder. Fantastic. We're halfway, 20 seconds left. Very good. You can see Soph bends both elbows as she's lowering herself down. It's just biased towards one side. Last 10 seconds now. Alrighty. That's a job well done. Could we see a uh, plank bunny hop, please, Soph? So this is the second last one that we did a, a rough draft of in our warm up there. So we're taking our feet to either side. 
We can jump if we're wanting to make that a little tougher and we just sink our hips down when we get out there. So from straight legs into bent legs, either stepping or jumping. We want to try and think about really straight arms throughout this. We actually want to flex our triceps as best we can to keep our elbow extended, regardless of whether we're stepping or jumping our feet in and out. And Soph's doing a really good job of keeping her shoulder stacked on top of her elbow. So she's not leaning back or forth, which is helping her to be very stable there. Last couple seconds. Very good, alrighty. Now, the last one that we had a look at previously was our toe reach. So we're keeping our feet as high as we can, as straight a leg as we can. And we're here for 40 seconds. Nice one, Soph. If people are finding this tough, can you show us an alternative? Just a bent knee and reaching towards our foot still. Nicely done. If it's uncomfortable for your neck, as you saw there, so will support the back of her head. And we're just trying to relax our head into our hands in that position to steal one of Soph's lines. We've got 15 seconds left, guys. I hope you're going well. Five seconds. Nicely done, alrighty. In our rest, Soph, can you please quickly show us one burpee? So we're going to go from standing all the way up to our chest all the way on the ground. That's our full version, let's get to it, guys. If you're finding that a little tough, can we walk a foot in and out, please? Nice one, and we don't need to worry about the push-up at the bottom. This is about a big range of motion, getting a heart rate up. We're not too worried about the upper body press. That's a job well done. If you're wanting to make it a little tough, guys, we'll take our chest all the way to the floor. Big spring at the top. You can see Soph's getting at least three feet of air. We've got 15 seconds left. Keep it going, guys. And that's time. And we are halfway, guys. That's 13 down, 13 to go. We're going to get into a bird dog, so we'll be on hands and knees here. Can we start with just a knee raise, Soph? That's it. So we're just extending one leg back, alternating legs. And then can we do just our hands, please? So the upper body component there. Once again, an anti-rotation trunk exercise with core work. Nice one. And then we'll put them together. So left hand and right leg extend, and then the alternate. As we do this, we're trying to minimize how much we extend through our through our trunk. So we're pushing up out of our shoulders, it's a protracted scap, you're about really pushing into the ground, lifting your chest away from the floor. Imagine being poked up in our sternum. Nicely done, so that's a very good job. Five seconds left. So we're well past halfway now, guys. It's, uh, it's the home stretch, you might say. We've got some back abs, which is a personal favorite. This is a jiu-jitsu exercise. It's a guard retention drill, it's called, and clock's on. So. We want to think about trying to shuffle. We're shortening the distance between our rib and our hip on one side. So it's like a little Russian twist. If you're finding this a bit tough, can you just show us a Russian twist, please, Soph? We're going to reach from side to side and keep our feet in place, our hips in place. Nice one. We've got 22 seconds left, guys. So the point of this drill is if I'm trying to pass Soph's guard uh, and we're wrestling, she's got to be able to move and follow my uh, my movement to, uh, to stop me. It's a defensive position in jiu-jitsu. Nice one, we've got eight seconds left, guys. It's hard going, hard going. Might be the hardest yet. Very good. We're looking for quick change of direction in that exercise. So it's getting into our skaters here. So that's our scaled option, the plyometric. A little harder option is to spring off one foot. We land on the ball of the foot on the outside, sink our heel to the ground and then we reach down and tap the ground on the inside of our foot. Our stepped version, nice one. So a little like our curtsy squat that we did earlier, we're just not worried about being upright. We're thinking about trying to reach down to force ourselves to move through a really significant range of motion, making things a little tougher. We've got 12 seconds left. So it's going well. I don't know that Soph's even broken a sweat. I'm, uh, I'm starting to get a bit puffed myself. And that's time. We've got 10 seconds rest, guys. We can go into a squat to forward fold, a little bit of a variation of what we did as one of our mobility exercises in our warm up. So Soph's gonna rest her elbows on her knees. She's thinking about trying to be really upright in the squat position. And then 
as we did in the warm up, letting the uh, letting the shoulder drop towards the shins or the quads when we come into the hinge in the forward fold position. So we've got our squat and our forward fold and we alternate back and forth. If you're finding this a little tough, you could rest your hands on your knees and it's just gonna make us move through a little smaller range. If we keep our elbows a bit more extended there too, that's it, we're really short now, range nice one. 10 seconds left, let's see that full range again. Thanks, Soph. I wanna make sure you're uh, keeping honest over there. That's a job well done. We're going to go to a set of hundreds from here, please. So this is one of our favorite Pilates moves. Soph's looking to maintain an imprint, it's fine here. Radio clock's on. So we're thinking about shortening the rib to hip distance and imagine I was to poke my hand underneath my lower back. I'm trying to squash down in that position. So Soph's crunching slightly, lifting her shoulder off the floor. Uh, and then she's also gone to a tabletop position to make it a little tougher. But you can rest your feet down here. If we wanted to make it even harder, we would extend our legs out. Thank you. And then shoulders off the ground and then hips off the ground. Good job, nice one. We've got 15 seconds left, guys. So we count the hundreds, we do 100 reps, 100 little flutters with our hands. It's good practice for your spirit fingers for Saturday night, busting a move. Alrighty, two, one, and that's time. We've got 10 seconds. We're going to get into some mountain climbers. So this will just be a little faster version of what we did before. Nice one. And if you're wanting to step it up, as you saw, here we go, clock's on. As you saw, Soph's going to a plyometric version. Rather than stepping her feet in and out, she's going to jump her feet in and out. So Soph's doing a really good job of keeping her shoulder stacked on top of her wrist here, which is part of the challenge. So we want to think about, if anything, leaning forward slightly um, so that our weight's in our fingertips. That's it. As opposed to if you just shift your shoulders back for me. So if we're back here and our shoulder's behind our wrist, it's a lot harder on the trunk, a lot harder on the shoulders too. So we want to avoid that. We want to try and get a little volume done here, get our heart rate up rather than making it too much of a strength challenge. We've got seven, six, five, four seconds left. And that is time. Alrighty, can you show us some in and out in our rest please? So nice one. So once again, loading the legs here, we want to think about standing all the way up each time, just uh, towards hip and knee extension. Let's go. Nice one. So feet come really narrow and then moderately wide, just a little wider than our normal squat. You can see Soph's using her arms to help her spring up there. It's not a significant squat range, it's about volume once again. So we're looking to keep our heart rate up again. Soph's doing a fantastic job of having a nice soft landing here. So it's not a huge jump, it's just about extending the legs. I'm sure it feels like enough. Last five seconds. Fantastic, all righty. From there, we'll have a look at our single leg bridge. So we're going to keep one foot planted, our heels relatively close to our hip, and then the other leg's just off the ground. It's passive. Clock's on, let's go. And we're going to keep moving through that range. So we're not looking to articulate through our trunk. So squeezing our abs and pushing her heel really hard into the ground. So we want downward force here, which drives the hip up and keeps a nice neutral trunk for us. If you're wanting a scaling option, we can rest our ankle on the other knee, so the leg that's not doing much work. And if that's a little much still, we can plant both feet back down to the ground, and then we just go to a bilateral glute bridge. We've got 15 seconds left, so we're still on that same side. Uh, we're going to do another round in a moment's time for the opposite side. We're trying to rest our head here, be nice and passive through our neck. We want to, we want to relax as much as we can, don't we? 10 seconds left. Sorry, 10 seconds rest even. Sorry, I, I can't do that to you, can I? We're gonna go to a crawl here, Soph. Alrighty, let's go. So, Soph's doing a good job keeping your knee really low to the ground here, which is going to make this a little tougher on our trunk. If we were to extend our legs out, it becomes a little bit more of an upper body exercise. If you're wanting a scaling option, we can rise and fall. So we go from our knees resting on the ground in our quadruped position, and then just lifting our hips about pushing our toes and our hands into the ground, lifting our hips away from the floor. Otherwise, we'll keep crawling. Nice one. Once again, we should be able to rest the T on the back and not lose any. Or on a day like today, maybe something, uh, yeah, maybe an iced tea. That's it. 10 seconds rest. We've got our glute bridge again on the opposite side. So a couple of options. We can go to a full single leg bridge. All right, clock's on, let's go. We can support the knee 
excuse me, support the ankle on the opposite knee or a bilateral movement there where we're going to be able to share the load between both of our legs a little easier. Let's go. One of the attractions to doing a single leg bridge is that Soph's going to work too hard to keep her hips stable here. So as she pushes her left foot into the ground, Soph's inclination is to lift her left hip and kind of leave the right one behind. But part of the attraction of the, the core element of this is to try and lift both hips square. Uh, that's going to make us work a little harder. We want to get as much out of each of these exercises as we can. Five seconds left. And that'll do us there, guys. We've got 10 seconds rest. We're back on our feet. We've got some center lunge jumps. And we're on the home stretch. We've only got a couple minutes to go. Alrighty, so feet come back to the center every time. And then we lunge backwards. Nice one. If you're not looking to do an plyometric option, a more paced version would be to stand together, drop one knee back towards the floor. But we don't need to get our knee all the way to the floor. That's, uh, that's gonna be pretty individual. We wanna think about a relatively upright torso in this position. Once again, the full version, there's a little spring. Nicely done. If we wanted to make that harder, we'll try and jump a bit higher. So if I want to see you nudge the ceiling there, please. That's a job well done. Seven, six, five, we're almost there. And we're really close to the end now, guys. We've just got a plank on either side. So we can, we're gonna rest on our elbow here to begin with, guys. You can rest your knees and then raise and lower the hips. Or we could go out to our feet stacked. That's going to be a longer lever, a little more weight supported, a little harder work. If you're finding balance is a difficult thing there, uh, rather than stacking your foot, so if she's taking her, tray, or her top leg to, uh, to the back of her foot there. Nice one. Alrighty, so once again, we're on the elbow. You can lower your knees down and go from there if that's, uh, if that's appropriate. Otherwise, the harder version would be to extend both legs out and we're still rising and lowering there. I hope you're going fantastically at this point, guys. We've got five seconds left. We've got one more exercise. Nice one. 10 second rest, and then we'll come to our, our opposite side for our lucky last round. Alrighty, let's go. So it's all the same things. We're either on our knee or resting our, uh, excuse me, we're resting our knee on the floor or we're extending both legs to make it a little more challenging. We wanna keep thinking about that pulse sort of motion. So raising and lowering the hips. 17 seconds left. Nice one, just another thought. If balance is an issue here, we could just rest this hand just in front of us, giving us an extra point of contact with the floor. Three, two, one, and that is time. Alrighty, job very well done, guys. I'm just gonna pause the timer and we're going to have about a minute's rest and then we're going to look at just a couple more uh, exercises just to really round things out nicely. So, um, can you give me an exercise that you'd like to have a look at, please? Nice one, so we're going to, let's start with a bent knee, if you would please. So a little like a bicycle, you might say, guys. Uh, so reaching her left hand towards her right knee and hips and shoulders are pretty close to the ground. It's only the shoulder of the hand that's reaching that's lifting up. Both hips stay on the ground, so we're very square at our hips there. Nice one. If we wanted to make that a little harder, we could extend the leg and that's going to require us to sit up a little further, which is going to make these significantly tougher. I hope someone started a timer. Nicely done. Okay, we'll go three more on either side, please, Soph. Very good, two more. Lucky last. Nicely done. Okay, we're going to go 20 seconds rest there, guys. And our lucky last exercise is going to be a tabletop tap, so a little more trunk work to finish off. Potentially a scaling option for that exercise, you might argue. So once again, that tabletop or imprint or dish or hollow position. So it's trying to push her lower back towards the floor, shortening the distance between her rib and her hip. We're not too stressed if there is a little bit of uh, curvature in your lower back. 
that is going to lead to some uh, to, to a gap between your lower back and the floor. That's not an issue. It's about maintaining the distance between our rib and our hip, thinking about shortening that distance and then holding it in place. So if that's tough for you, you could just go to a tabletop hold. Uh, if you're wanting to make that even uh, a little easier, you could bring your knees into a, uh, what is that? So closed tuck, excuse me. And then we could extend our hip and our knee out a little bit towards more of a hollow or a dish position. And then we can start alternating legs again and making it a true tabletop tap. Can I see some nice straight legs for your last couple, Soph? Just in case someone's wanting to make it a little harder. Nice one. All right, we're going to keep going, guys. We've got about 20 seconds left here. I don't think so. It's done quite enough just yet. So can you make that a teaser, please? And then we'll lower from there. So we'll lift our shoulders up off the floor, whether we have bent legs or straight legs. And can we do a tap from there? So we're going to hold our teaser and lowering one leg at a time. <laughs> nice one. That's time, guys. Thank you so much. Alrighty guys, I'm feeling fresh. I'm invigorated for my day ahead. I, uh, I haven't broken too much of a sweat, but I dare say you have. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me as your guest. Um, I won't go so far as to say special guest because Soph really did all of the work uh, here today as well as you guys at home. But once again, I hope you've enjoyed it. Thank you so much and we'll see you next time.